I believe you are now able to see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, good, good, good. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> so, today's topic will be about code smiles. Usually, this is general topic for all languages, but in this presentation, I gathered some um, code smile information, like general, and um, also um, code smiles that I the most often meet during my work experience. Okay, let's go. So, agenda for today's uh, presentation will be we will talk and explain what is code smile, what exactly is. Uh, we will talk about code smile types, levels, and how do they in interact. Also, we will talk about and I will show you some common code smells and how to fix them. After that, we have a conclusions. And by the end of this uh, presentation, we're going to have questions and answers. OK, let's start. So what is code smell? So usually, code smell represents some characteristic of your code that possibly can indicate such a deeper problem. Code smells are not bugs or errors. Uh, code smells are violation of the uh, fundamentals of development software that decrease the quality of the code. Uh, usually code smells uh, slow down processing of a program. Um, in this case, uh, I mean that uh, the processing of uh, developing um, also is decreased. And code smiles increased risk of uh, failures and errors while uh, making the program vulnerable uh, to the bugs in future. Uh, usually code smiles uh, also indicates that um, low, uh, low quality of the code in your program. Okay, let's move to the next type. Uh, next slide. So, code smell types. So we have a uh, five code smell types, and the first one is the bloaters. So what is the bloaters? Uh, usually, bloaters it's uh, some part of code could be a method or class or I don't know even maybe module. Yeah, that it increased to the gigantic size during the development and with this uh, such a big methods and classes it's become hard to work during the time so the next type is the object orienter or in object orientation abusers in uh, short words we can say that this is uh, mean that code doesn't follow the simplest object oriented programming principles the next type, change preventers. Uh, this is the most often uh, thing that I met during my work experience. So uh, usually change preventers uh, means that if you want to change some part of the code, you usually have to change it in much than one place. <clears throat> so the next one. Uh, dispensables. It's uh, usually also, I have seen a lot of in my work experience, usually it's unneeded or a pointless code, which removing it will make this code cleaner and uh, more efficient and easier to understand. And the last one is the, the last one type is sculptors. Uh, it's uh, the, the code smell that represents high coupling between classes or entire modules. So uh, let's move to the code smell levels. There are three code smell levels. So the first one is the application level smell. Uh, usually at this uh, level, 
<clears throat> we see such code smells like mysterious names uh, or magic numbers. We see like duplicated a lot of duplication of the code. Uh, also, we see here uh, shotgun surgery smell. Uh, we will talk about um, details of shotgun surgery a little bit more later. Uh, also, also probably that's it. Let's move to the next. So it's a class level smell. So usually um, on class level smell, uh, we see such smells like, um, like for example, large class, the most obvious thing. It's uh, also, it's known as a gut object. And <clears throat> some uh, also <clears throat> at class level, we are able to see like refused bequest uh, could smell. It's also oh, oh, very often I saw in my experience. We'll talk about its details a little bit later. Or even, for example, like uh, also called uh, cut smell, which called is a lazy class, or in other words, is freeloader. It's a class that does too little or almost nothing. And the last level which I want to talk is the method level smells. Usually, at this level occurs um, such smells like too many parameters for the method or function, uh, very long method code, like obvious things, or for example, not really obvious, like uh, extensive return of data. It's for example, when method return you an object here, yeah, but the color um, uses only some fields of this object and the other color also, uh, and the other color of this method uh, uses um, some other methods, uh, fields of this object. So let's move to the next. And the next one uh, I created on my own will uh, such a table, usually in the sources which you can find through the internet, there are um, Code smells categorized in most cases by types, uh, but I tried to make the table and see how types and smells are uh, interact. Uh, obviously, there um, here as is not all the code smells that are present uh, as I found, and uh, there are over sixty different code smells, and here I show that the most common I meet in my experience. So as you can see, like <clears throat> on application level, we have a shotgun surgery and duplicated code. These two code smells uh, examples, you will be able to see <clears throat> in this presentation a little bit later. A large class, class was skipped for the obvious reason, it's to be class and it's needed to be split into several different classes. So I didn't put it here because the size of the slides <laughs> won't meet the criteria. Uh, also here we were able to see like a data clump, code smell, refused uh, bequest, uh, lazy class and freeloader and speculative generality was skipped. Uh, <clears throat> also, you will be able to see like future envy, inappropriate intimacy. By the way, these two code smells are very similar. Uh, we will see middleman, a middleman and message chain. Um, we also have a, some interesting thing about these two code smells. And the uh, long method and long list parameters was also skipped uh, due to their obvious and the huge size of the screen. Okay, let's move next. So let's start with shotgun surgery. So um, the example is, um, let's say, quite trivial, <clears throat> but I think the um, context and understanding how to use 
uh, uh, how to fix shotgun sur surgery, you will understand. So usually shotgun surgery is used mostly for classes, not for methods. Uh, what does it mean? That if we modificate, for example, if we want to modificate uh, this conditional, we see that we have to modificate also a conditional in this file, in this uh, function. So a single change uh, requires us to do a lot of changes in the different classes and methods. So uh, the easiest way to fix this issue is to use the extract method and just to put conditional basically just in other private method or let's say common function which could be used over other classes. And if we want, in this case, if we want to change this conditional, so we have to change only it in one place. And we don't have to change it in many other places. So what are prompts? So we have the better organization of the code. We have less code duplication and we have easier maintenance of the code. Okay, let's move to the next code smell. So duplicated code. So obviously it's a very obvious thing. Uh, for example, if we have uh, some, uh, we have a burning release, we have to implement something very fast and we don't have a time to think about it. It's much more easier to copy paste code a lot of times. And in this case, we have a lot of code duplication, but later in future, we could fix it if we had additional time. So the here is a common example, very simple, like we have a, a object uh, class uh, constructor with uh, two different constructors. And as you can see in this example, we can um, remove code duplication by calling another constructor in the, um, by calling constructor inside of the other constructor. In this case, code looks cleaner and looks better as for me. Also, there is one uh, important note that we have to ignore um, uh, of merging to doing the uh, identical fragments of code uh, can make the code less intuitive and obvious. So what, is, what are prompts? So, um, the merging duplicating code makes its structure shorter and simplifies it. Also simplification plus shortness code uh, easier to simplify and cheaper to support it in the future. Okay, let's move to the next code smell. So data clump. So what do we mean here? Uh, let's imagine that we have, um, for example, a database connection, or let's say we are working with the sockets. Usually we pass uh, several different parameters with uh, uh, two different type of methods, but, but all these parameters are the same for this method. So this is our data clump. When we are passing, for example, into the, in this uh, example, we are passing uh, two strings to the class, we can uh, fix this issue by encapsulating uh, these two parameters and putting them into another class in, instead of passing a lot of uh, primitive types we can just pass uh, one single class. 
uh, important thing that um, it is not always uh, make sense to fix data clumps, uh, code smells. Why? Because uh, it can make <clears throat> undesirable dependency between the two classes, which we don't want it. So um, before uh, fix data clumps in our code, we should twice think. So bronze of this code is improve understanding and organization of the code, reduce code size. As definitely not fit for this example, but if we had much more colors with the same parameters, this would probably reduce the code of the size. So the next one is uh, refuse request. This is one of the most common code smell that I uh, faced during my work experience. So what about this code smell? Uh, for example, we have a class vehicle and class car and plane inherits from uh, vehicle. As you can see, uh, car, uh, we could drive a car, but we could not drive the plane. You, you are fly on the plane. So uh, this is uh, mean that the plane inherited unneeded uh, virtual uh, method that it's no needed to implement inside it. It's called the refused request. Code smell. So the most easiest and common proposition to fix it is just to move this drive method to the car class and implement it there and implement its own method for the plane class. Okay, so PRONS is improve code clarity and organization, and definitely that's it. So, and these two code smells like future envy and an appropriate intimacy, they are pretty similar. So the future envy is a code smell when the method access the data of uh, another object more than its own data. And inappropriate intimacy, it's when uh, one class uses the internal fields and methods or methods of another class. So they uh, here uh, looks pretty similar. And as you can see in this example, we have a get full address uh, method, which access um, data of contact info class more often than its own data. Also, it's uh, suitable for an appropriate intimacy code smell. Uh, so uh, this is a sign of the code smell, which should be fixed. And the most easiest way to fix it is just to move uh, get full address data method to the contact info class. In this case, we are not accessing uh, data and methods of other class in this scope. So uh, the prones, the less code duplication, uh, the better code organization we have. And also it's an improved code organization and simplifies uh, support, uh, support for future code reuse and fix. Okay. The next good smell is the middleman. So, this very interesting cut smell. Uh, uh, what does it mean? 
So if a class perform one action or delegating work to another class, why we should have this class at all? Yeah, sounds clear and pretty similar. And in this example, you see that um, <clears throat> clients, um, client class in zip code method delegate his job to the address class to his uh, zip code method. Um, it looks uh, something familiar to us, but let's talk about a little bit later. So in some cases, this looks like a middleman. So how we can fix this issue? <clears throat> uh, by fixing this issue, we <clears throat> can, instead of returning um, the zip code uh, object, we can return address uh, object. And after that, we call the direct uh, <clears throat> method of the address object. Uh, what I can I say? Uh, we should ignore middleman uh, in those cases when we uh, <clears throat> when we create it. It looks middleman looks pretty similar uh, to such as design patterns like proxy or even the decorator. So in this case, we used those patterns on our will. Um, and in this case, we should ignore fixing the uh, middle uh, man code smell. So what does, what are our prompts? So, uh, so less bulky code and basically that's it. And now we have talked about message chain and you will be a little bit surprised as you see this is a resolved example from the uh, middleman. Here we have a message chain, which is also the smell of the, the code smell. <clears throat> so how do we fix it? Basically, as you can see, this uh, result of this fixing, uh, we are returning to the middleman. So, uh, in this case, um, do we have always loose loose? No, basically there is uh, an option where we can, um, resolve this issue. And we will talk about the resolution of this issue in the next slide. Now we are going to talk about the console, reduces dependencies between class of chain, uh, reduces amount of bloated code, and that's it. And see how we can fix our message chain in the other way. Uh, before the fixing this issue, I want to say that correct solution depends on what we use it for. So, uh, for example, the data can be hierarchical by, na by nature. So, message change don't mean a problem because we want to access the data in different clonarity. And as you can see in this example, we just uh, depends on our solution and what we exactly need. Uh, one of the uh, one of fixes could be is just uh, get a read of, of address class if we really need this class in this chain in or well, want to have it as middleman. Okay, so this is, was the most common code smells that I faced uh, during my uh, work experience and 
which was hard to fix. Now I want you to suggest some tools that can help us to find code smells. Uh, obviously, um, this these tools won't find every code smell, but most of them, the, the, those could be found with the help of those tools. So uh, the first, as I remember, the first two source uh, tools are uh, you need to pay for them, about the third one I couldn't remember and the most popular browser for small projects not only for small that uh, idea I'm sorry not the browser idea that uh, used now it's uh, uh, Visual Studio Code it has a lot of plugins which could find some of code smells in your code and uh, help you to fix them in future And the conclusion. So, the code smells can be presented in code written by experienced program. Uh, I am one of them. I'm also sometimes when I write in my code, I see that it doesn't smell good and it should be fixed. Also, code smell. Uh, could reduce uh, the lifetime of Satwari and make it difficult to maintain. This is uh, the most common thing that if you have a lot of code smells in your code, yeah, it's become a harder and hunger to, harder to maintain and or support your project. Even there are some cases that your project has such a lot of code smells that it's easier to rewrite it from the scratch. Also code smells uh, block you from expanding your software freely. It doesn't make your software scalable. Uh, code smells could present in your code a lot of times. And my suggestion is to use a lot of uh, automated code review tools to detect the code smells. And the final thing that I want to say that uh, when you are removing uh, code smells, don't let another bunch of smells into your pods. So that's it. Do we have any questions? <laughs>